following the ringing in Ripper's head, they trekked further down, the cavern narrowed, and the darkness seemed more and more oppressive with every step. The pain in Ripper's head started to increase dramatically until they found themselves at the mouth of a narrow passage. Ripper gathered his strength, insisting that he be the one to bear the brunt of whatever was to come. Delving into the darkness alone, he was horrified to find the remnant of those who had changed the path of his life forever. Embedded in the stone, eyes shining in the dark, was the petrified skull of a mind flare. Lashing out in panic with raw, unformed magic, Ripper shattered the skull, exposing the crystalline brain within. He cautiously retrieved the crystal with the intent of throwing it into the cavern's depths. Into the abyss, you monster! Ripper cried as he wound up to cast it into the dark. Wait! Laramie cried, and Belly, with his lightning reflexes, caught the hand holding the crystal. That thing looks expensive. Don't just throw it away. Very well, but I will not carry it and we sell it as soon as we can. Upon their return to the surface, the party told Speaker Mastu of the peace they would broker with the kobolds. You spoke with them, and they want what? Mastu asked. They just want shelter and safety like anyone else, Demaya said matter-of-factly. Why don't we meet at the mine entrance in an hour? We'll make sure Trex comes alone. You do the same. The six of us are more than capable of keeping the peace. Besides, they are too stupid to outsmart any of us, Ripper offered. I don't know, they were laying some pretty sophisticated looking traps, Belly replied. Traps? An hour later, the party was waiting outside the mine with Trex when they heard far too many footsteps approaching. Matthew apparently didn't like the sound of those traps and had brought a regiment of his guards. You said he'd come alone! Trex exclaimed defensively, taking a step back and producing a bundle of dynamite. Supposed to. Kelligor growled. After some tense negotiations and a cave-in scare, everyone returned to town ready to celebrate the newly minted peace. After a night of carousing at the Blue Clam, Belly woke up the next morning with a new, not entirely pleasant ringing in his head. The party headed to Pandora, the Arcane Brotherhood shop, where they purchased some equipment and sold the crystalline brain. They then agreed to investigate the druidic temple they'd heard about in the Lonelywood Forest.